my name is Andreas Hohmacher. I'm the CTO of Aurelius Enterprise, and I'm presenting today about Aurelius Atlas powered by Apache Atlas, uh, together with my colleague Gabriela Pasha. We'll tell you a little bit how our solution looks like, why we have that solution, and what it adds to Apache Atlas, and also a little bit on how the technical background looks like of this solution. So let's get into it. The Apache Atlas, as many of you may know, is focusing on data management, in particular on data governance. We are working mainly in the manufacturing industry and there uh, we are dealing with all kinds of different trends going on. We are having initiatives around automation, robotics plays a big role, big data, cloud computing, uh, autonomous uh, vehicles and um, other aspects there as well as uh, Internet of Things, IoT play a big role there. Everything which is related to the before mentioned topic requires some sort of data management. You always produce data, you always have to store data, you always have to organize data and make use of it. This is essential and uh, that really requires that you have a good representation of what does your data mean, where does your data reside, how do you get to that data, and who is actually accountable for that data next to other topics. So these are kind of the challenges if you're going with data in a current environment. It's really often that it takes too long to get the data when you need it. We don't know where the data resides and how it's used. Uh, it's always questionable the quality and what is now really the quality. What are the guarantees provided by the owner of the data on the quality? We have low data competency means people hardly know where and when, uh, where the data is stored and what the meaning of this data is. You find a lot of uh, solutions related to governance, but many of them are really focusing on a specific platform, let's say Azure or RBS, and Apache Atlas in itself is cross-platform and therefore can capture all aspects and therefore also our solution. We have added a quality check for the governance data as well as for the actual data and uh, can report that to the owner to give the owner an insight on how he or she is performing is keeping the data in a good shape. Last, and how do you get to the data? Where does the data originate from uh, to do kind of a data lineage, but also impact analysis. If a system goes down, you have an idea on who else and who is affected by the lack of the data at a certain point. To be able to handle data governance, um, you, you have to understand what data governance means. So we split up data governance in three aspects. The technical aspects <clears throat> looks at the formats of the data, the type of the data, um, the systems where the data actually reside in, be it a server, a cloud provider, a database, a file storage, whatsoever. It says something about the quality rules, so which quality guarantees are provided by the owner of the data, and the process. So how is the data actually being processed? How is the data moving from one environment to the other environment, from one system to the other system? These technical topics can be pretty well handled by scanning environments. So you extract information from a running system or via infrastructure as code. It's getting much more difficult with the second category, the business side of the story, um, where you are describing what are my data domains? What is the meaning of the actual data and where is it located in the different systems? A categorization of data, is it um, uh, confidential information, is it public information and so forth, or classifications of the data, things like is it uh, personal identifiable information, GDPR and so forth. And last but not least is accountability. Only if you have accountability, 
then you have somebody to talk to if you want to improve something on your data. And you want to improve it on the technical side, so closest to the source of the systems. The last dimension of data governance is the operational dimensions. Here we are talking about quality results, we are talking about whether data has been delivered or not, we are talking about the governance uh, quality of things. Okay, having said these three um, dimensions of data governance, we now want to look at the benefits of data governance, and that will be taken care of by my colleague, Gabriela. What are the benefits of data governance? Data governance establishes a common understanding of the data and how it is applied and used by the business. It empowers business decisions by having a single version of the truth on the data. Businesses can identify and prioritize data products to their business needs. Data governance improves the efficiency by allowing data users to faster determine if the data is fit for purpose such as if it contains the fields needed for a project, and if so, where to find it and who is accountable for it. Further analysis on the processes involved can reveal opportunities for further improvements. It can help businesses to improve their data compliance by letting them keep track of sensitive information they can know if they are being compliant with data protection regulations such as keeping track of personally identifiable information. The fourth benefit is that it can guide data quality improvement efforts. An impact analysis on the quality can help them prioritize their efforts to increase the data quality, which will reduce their, which will reduce their operational errors and increase their analytical accuracy. With the combination of the first four benefits, the fifth benefit can be gained. The execution of digital strategies can be done to get data products to market faster, and the business can gain more value from their data. So after we now understand the benefits of data governance, I want to introduce the data model we have been using. And it's relating to the three dimensions we have discussed before. And it's consisting out of the business where we describe the meaning of the data. And each business concept is related to a person who is actually accountable for this particular part of the data. On the other side, we have a technical aspect. So here we describe where the data is actually being located and how the data is being processed. That's on the bottom part. The gray part represents the operational aspect of the data or the data governance. And here we are talking about the quality guarantees given by the owner of the data and the results of it on the actual data. So if you translate that into a concrete example based on an HR model, then we have on the business side, the human resources, which is a data domain and therefore, we have a fleet personnel, which is an entity, and in there we have an employee number. Everybody understands employee number. It's describing kind of an ID of a user, of an employee. Each of these business concepts are associated with a person, in our case, Andreas and Sharif, who are accountable for these business objects. On the lowest level, on the attribute level, the business side is related to the technical side, where we describe where the data, the actual data is stored. So this blue arrow in the middle represents the association between meaning and technical location of the data. So an employee number then is stored in a table, which is stored in the SQL database, which is stored on a particular server somewhere in the system. On the field level, so the technical lowest level representation, we also associate data quality aspects. Please be aware that the relation between business and technical is only on the attribute level, which makes it possible to record lineage on a very fine granular level, and which allows to associate meaning on a very detailed level. 
data governance is more than data structures and um, and and lineage and so forth. It also comes with a lot of roles and processes around it. Just want to mention a few exemplarily, uh, and I will not discuss the data governance rules around it or processes around it simply because they're very organization specific and um, they're not part of our solution per se. So we have a data sponsor who is usually related on the C level, which really is making sure that we have support from the highest management level to get data governance actually uh, started. If you don't have this kind of level of support, the data governance project most likely will not succeed. Next, in the business side, we have data domain leads who are then accountable for the actual data management for a specific data domain. They delegate their responsibility to business data owners, which are on a more detailed level, looking at certain parts of the data space in the data domain. The business data stewards actually then the first level contact people who actually do the, the real work and make sure that the information is fed into a data governance system, that the people are organized and that everything goes its way. The data users are then actually the users of the system. They are the data scientists, the data engineers, the system engineers who are looking into the um, data governance tooling to infer where does the data come from, what is impact, what is the meaning, and what, uh, where is the data located, and so forth. So they are the actual users of the system. I mentioned at the beginning typical challenges, um, and I now will illustrate in the demo, step by step, how you can solve each individual um, challenge uh, using the Aurelius Atlas uh, tooling. I have listed here the yeah, high-level stories and I have in the slide deck, which you can see in the page, in the um, Apache Con page, um, I have all the different paths also explained so that you can follow up that later yourself. So let's start with a demo. Um, and see how the Aurelius Atlas tool works. So the first part of the demo is uh, that it takes too long to get the data when we actually need it. So the path of the demo will be that we start from the business context, from the main search window, and we search for the employee, and we get a list of uh, um, possible concepts to support that. We filter that down on the data entities and then look where the data actually are reside and um, who the accountable person for this data is. As a data user, I'm looking for data with a specific meaning. In my case, I'm looking for employees. For this particular data, I want to know where the data is actually stored and how I can get access to the data. So if I'm searching for this data, I see here that we have 20 attributes. This is too low level. So I'm going on data entities, which gives me more detail about the overall um, data structure. So if I go internal, so these are internal employees in the organization. They are managed by, the data is owned by Meryl Hoffman. So if I want to gain access, I have to ask her. Next, I see there's one place where they're technically stored. And I can see that the data is stored in a database table called NL1HR001, which is contained in a database called NL1HR which is contained in a server NL1. With this, I have all the information I need to get access. The next demo is to understand where the data actually resides and how, it's, how it is being used. So this is usually addressed in a data governance tooling using data lineage. 
So for a given technical data set, you can see who is the owner of the data, sorry, who is the consumer of the data and where does the data actually come from? We use this in the demo for the HR data set and show you the way around it. In the demo, you will be able to see that it, we track lineage information from the source through different systems across different environments until we visualize the data in a dashboard. As an implementer of a data pipeline, I want to update the schema of a particular table. So I have to understand who's actually using my data and um, where are these different data being used to make sure that they also adjust their schema and the subsequent pipelines. So if I have a table NAL1HR001, I'm searching for this in the technical context. I find here directly my result. And I see there's a lineage model available, which gives me indication on where the information is being transferred and how it's being used. So here we see the source. It's uh, converted or transferred into a Kafka topic from there into an elastic index and so forth. So with the lineage graph, you're able to see where the data is actually going. And as you can see in this particular example, it's not limited to a particular system, but it's cross different applications and systems. We are tracking the governance information. In the previous demo, we have already seen that the data was captured across platforms. So in our specific case here, we use a relational database, then a Kafka instance to communicate the change events and then store state in an elastic um, search storage. We make then the data available in a Kibana dashboard. So here we have three different systems, a server, a SQL server, a Kafka system and an elastic system. And we record all data consistently uh, across the different um, environments in our Obelius Atlas tooling. The next demo is about data quality. So we want to find out whether the data is of high enough quality in a specific data set. And if it's not, to understand where the data quality is violated and what we can do about it. So this works by <clears throat> finding the data by their meaning and see where the observed data quality metrics reside. Uh, we go, for instance, to the employee number field, look at the quality rules, and then show if it's propagated to the, how it's propagated to the business side. Let's say I'm starting a project and I'm looking for some suitable data. I found a data set that seems promising and go to its details page. On the page, an overview of the overall data quality of the data set can be seen. What we see here is that the quality is not 100%. Going down to the fields, we can see the quality of each field and identify where the quality is not being met. If my project only requires the fields FTE and location to which the quality is high, I can ignore the bad quality of the unrelated fields. However, if I require the field hair organization, we can see that the accuracy is low. Going to the fields details page and looking at the quality rules, we can see that the syntax of the field is not always being followed. With this information, I can now understand the limitations of the data set. Going to the data attributes, I can find the accountable person to contact to ask them to clean it up. This will not solve the immediate need for good data, but gives insight before using it. One of the common questions we get when presenting our solution is, how do you get the data in? In this little demo, we will show 
three different ways on how to ingest data and um, give you an idea on how to fill the Aureus Atlas system. So how do we actually get data in? There are three ways to get data into the solution. The first is by the user interface, creating entities one by one. Here I can select the type I wish to create, fill in the name, provide a description, and then link it to other entities, such as the domain lead. The entity is then saved and created. This is possible for both business data and technical data. The second option is to use an Excel data dictionary that can bulk push multiple entities at once. Here we can fill in the name, the description, and the data ownership role. This is used for creating business data in bulk. The third way is to use an API to create technical information. A business can collect the metadata during creation or retrospectively during scanning from their technology. And this can connect the API to push the data to the solution. Governance quality checks means that a person who is accountable for a set of data is actually checking what the, whether the governance information has been filled in properly. So we define for every type in the quality, sorry, in the governance system, we define governance quality rules. This is more or less like which attributes should be filled, which relations should be present, and so forth. This gives the person accountable for filling in that information and for monitoring that, like a business owner, gives an idea whether or not um, everybody has done that and what the quality is of the governance data which has been recorded, not from a content point of view, but more from a structure point of view. Filling in the data governance information can be overwhelming. Therefore, the tool can help to determine how this process is going through the checks of the data governance quality. On the side of each card in the search, you can see a little icon that determines if the information about this entity is complete or not. Further clicking into the details of the entity, you can see which data governance checks have been performed on the entity. This gives an indication to the person responsible if the entity is complete or not. In this example, we see that the data domain has no data entities. This suggests that it is incomplete and more information should be added. After these demos, I now want to talk a little bit more about the actual tooling that, um, and the systems behind it and how we deploy the solution um, to you as a community. So the deployment of our solution is provided as a Helm chart so that you can roll it out in your own Kubernetes cluster. The tooling itself or the solution itself consists out of Apache Atlas in the core with the Apache Kafka and we use an HBase uh, in the image at the moment. We also publish make accessible the original Apache Atlas user interface. In addition to that, we have we deploy a key clock, which is our identity provider. It's open source also, and which allows to integrate with all kinds of other uh, identity providers, like in our demo environment, we connect with Gmail, um, but you could also connect to an active directory somewhere. On top of that, we have our actual user interface, which you have seen, um, and which is included in what we call the reverse proxy uh, port. This port, as you have seen, we make a lot of use of searches and full text search, but also with different facets and so forth. For that, we are using the Elastic stack. So an Elastic search with an Elastic enterprise search and in Kibana just to manage the environment. We also publish the Kibana interface in this Helm chart. Since the synchronization all changes 
are directly performed in Apache Atlas, but then have to be um, updated in the Elastic environment. We use uh, Apache Flink and some jobs in there, streaming jobs in there, to consume the Kafka events from Apache Atlas and translate that into changes in the Elastic Enterprise Search environment using these streams. As additional service, we have um, REST-based uh, services uh, for the data to model and the lineage model, both are related, required for the uh, lineage graph generation. And we have uh, Py uh, REST API for integrating our solution with uh, infrastructure as code in an easy way, uh, also provided in the image. The whole deployment is run in an individual namespace and is accessible via whatever uh, ingress URL you have. And then with a namespace slash Atlas for the reverse proxy and for the individual solution afterwards, uh, they have individual URLs. So as I said, we provide a Helm chart for this. And uh, it's possible to deploy the Helm chart multiple times in different namespaces. So in our usual environments, we have a governance set up for the dev environment, for the user acceptance environment, and for the production environment. They can all run in the same Kubernetes cluster underneath the same ingress controller. And you will always have the same URLs, except that the namespace becomes part of the um, URL and everything will be related there. So to understand a little bit how these different components work together, I have two slides outlining uh, these in relations in, in these uh, diagrams. So we have On this slide, I give an idea on how the browsing of a page in the front end actually is executed. So a user request comes in to our front end, which is a reverse proxy. Then we first check authorization and authentication against Keycloak, which potentially has subsequent uh, checks to potential other identity providers if configured that way. Then, the request is forwarded or we are requesting information uh, related to the entity details from Apache Atlas. And we ask also for additional context information like um, data quality, governance quality, and uh, more information about the context of the entity from the Elastic Enterprise Search. In some cases, we will also request a lineage graph. And in this cases, it will go via from the reverse proxy to the lineage model, potentially get some information from Apache Atlas and create the lineage graph um, in this diagram. The previous slide was about browsing Aurelius Atlas. In this slide, we're discussing how updates, create, update, and delete operations are actually processed in the environment. A request of a create, update, or delete operation is handled to the user interface, the reverse proxy, which then checks first authentication and authorization against Keycloak and potentially subsequent identity providers. Next, updates are actually executed in Apache Atlas. So then we are safe, all changes are executed properly. Now the next step is to propagate these changes to make sure that all the context information in um, the Elastic Enterprise Search are also up to date again. For that, we make use of the facility of Apache Atlas to publish changes to Kafka events. 
So we have an Apache Kafka where all the changes are published uh, in a specific topic. The first pipeline and all pipelines run in Apache Flink is the lookup entity pipeline, which receives that topic. It looks up uh, all the context information in Apache Atlas, enriches that event, and publishes this change event in another Kafka topic. The next two steps are publishing the state and determining the change. Published state documents the actual change happened, the actual new instance of the entity in Elastic Search which allows us later also to trace which versions did we have, who made which changes, and in which time series uh, dependency. The determined change uses a previous version of the entity from Atlas and the current change event from the Kafka topic. It compares the two, it identifies which relations have been changed, which attributes have been changed and summarizes that in a consistent way so that we can see these attributes have changed, these are the old values, these are the new values, and publishes that in a new topic. Now we have all the information, we have determined which cha what changed and how it changed, and now we can provide pipelines for updating the individual context. The propagate entity context is summarizing, is updating Elastic Enterprise Search to um, provide the updated information related to the context so that we can do searches properly and that we have these categories available for the drill down of the search engine. The Propagate Quality updates quality information. So either be data quality or governance quality, if a change happens, we have to add, uh, update the context of this quality information. Last step I want to discuss is integration options. I mentioned before that Keycloak is very well equipped to connect with other identity providers like Azure Active Directory or a Gmail or other identity providers you run in your, already in your organization. Also, if you have already a Keycloak running in your organization and you want to make use of it, then that's also possible. It requires uh, some configuration. All options require uh, configuration. It's also possible to run Apache Atlas external or Elastic external or Kafka external. External means that you disable the port in our Helm chart and you configure the remaining components in such a way that they use the already existing instances of these different applications. This makes it very dynamic depending on what you already have running and which infrastructure is already operated in your environment that you're not running additional resources um, and have a separation or scattering of your infrastructure. I just want to mention back the data creation aspect. With technical information, you have two main possibilities, obviously manually adding the data, but you also can scan technical concepts and manually align them with meaning. Or you can have in the infrastructure as code related uh, creation of these uh, different entities, uh, you can create uh, the required metadata in the governance tooling automatically. This would be my preferred option. On the business side, meaning we always have to enter manually. There is no way. And that can be with the web front end or Excel file import. The benefit is that we are propagating business concepts from, we can propagate business concepts from dev to prod environment. And this is something we can automate. So once you have to find the uh, meaning in one environment, we can make sure that we are propagating these changes uh, like with a normal release cycle from one environment to the other environment. On the operational side, we have added the data quality assessment framework, which I have discussed in this talk today. 
Um, but if you send me a message, then I can explain that more, more in, in more detail. So for the defining, we define data quality guarantees, but we also have a Python-based interpreter of these uh, specifications to actually check against the actual data and apply the rules on the data. The results of these assessments are then recorded in uh, Elastic uh, in a potentially aggregated way. So this way, you can create the different data and can get the most out of our, our US Atlas solution. Last slide, I have a link to the um, help chart uh, so they can deploy it. If you want to try it out yourself uh, on our demo data set, which we also have used in the demo today, we have a read-only version of um, our solution available and the, the Aurelius Dev West Europe Cloud app Azure.com demo Atlas environment. You can log in there with your Gmail account, so no registration, but you cannot change anything. We also have set up an Apache Atlas data governance group um, in LinkedIn. So if you are interested and be up to date, uh, we will publish there uh, on a regular basis. Um, updates, changes, new versions, and the force, what are you doing? The Aurelius Enterprise website you can find uh, under this year. Thanks a lot for your attention, and we are happy to take questions if you have any. Thanks a lot. <laughs>